The movie starts with Travis going to meet someone in the hospital. On his way, he reflects on his life. He thinks that every path you take leads to another choice, and some choices can change everything. One choice can have a domino effect on the rest of your life. And Travis has a very important choice to make. Travis gets to the hospital with flowers in hand and meets Dr. Ryan, telling him that he is there to meet someone who deserves the stars and the moon. He just wants to talk to her. Ryan lets him go ahead if that is what will help Travis move on. Travis thinks Ryan is always too easy on him, but it is only because Travis is always hard on himself. Travis smiles and the movie rewinds seven years into the past. Travis resides in a coastal town in Wilmington, North Carolina. He is a ladies' man through and through, and his friends just don't know how he manages to make all the ladies swoon. And then there is Monica, the one girl who has been Travis's on and off fling for years. She grabs Travis off his boat and invites him for a beer. Travis's friends are not too pleased to see her, but that is how it goes with Monica and Travis. Their relationship is like a boomerang. The men head back home and are greeted by the wives of Travis's other two friends. The women and the kids were waiting for the men to return, and now they can get the party started. Gabby is a medical student. She is studying inside her house while Travis, who is also her neighbor, throws a grilling party outside his house. Gabby steps out of her house to hang a wind chime on her porch, when the party across the yard catches her attention. It annoys Gabby how those people are playing such loud music. It makes it hard for her to study. Later that night, Gabby finds her dog, Molly, to be a little down. When she examines the dog, Gabby finds out that Molly is pregnant. Just then, the music starts again and Gabby, having reached her patience limit, storms out to settle it with her neighbor. She finds Travis sitting in a chair outside his house and not so politely asks him to slow it down. Travis recognizes her as his new neighbor. He has seen her watching him from his porch a few times. His comment irks Gabby to no end. Seeing Gabby getting worked up, Travis claims he was only kidding. He asks Gabby to take a seat, but she does not want to. He introduces her to his dog, Moby, and Gabby gives some judgy looks to the canine. Gabby will not even exchange names with him. Travis, being the jokester that he is, implies that Gabby has come to him for nefarious reasons. Gabby is beyond herself. She cannot believe how obnoxious the man is. Travis is only kidding. He asks her what her deal is, and Gabby tells him she is angry that his dog got her Molly pregnant. And because he plays his music too loud, Travis finds this whole thing so funny, but his attitude only gets Gabby more annoyed. After irking her some more and enjoying the heck out of it, Travis directs Abby to a vet clinic in town, tells her it is a father-son joint venture. He also assures her that Moby will not be an absent father and will take full responsibility for his actions. Gabby is just about done with his mocking when a woman interrupts them. Sensing the situation, the woman decides to wait inside for Travis. Gabby awkwardly excuses herself from the situation, and Travis turns the music right back on. Travis storms inside his kitchen, all hot and bothered. The lady from before is his sister Steph. She is eating ice cream when Travis rummages through the fridge for it. She asks him about the girl, and Travis tells her it is his new neighbor already bothering him. Steph smiles slyly as she realizes something, but will not yet tell Travis what it is. She hands him the ice cream he has been looking for and leaves. The next morning, Gabby is at the hospital, getting praised for her work by her superior, who happens to be her boyfriend, Ryan's dad. When Dr. Ryan shows up, Dr. McCarthy reminds him about their dinner that evening, and also to bring the girl Ryan has been seeing. Ryan asks Gabby to meet him alone. Gabby had no idea Ryan was planning to take her to meet his parents that night. They are so in love as they get cozy with each other in Ryan's office. This is exactly why Gabby resides all the way across the town. Gabby takes Molly to the vet and meets Dr. Shep. On examination, Gabby finds out that Molly is having three puppies. She feels so annoyed at the man whose dog did this. She is in the middle of a rant when the man appears at the door, informing her that the suspect in question was neutered several months ago. Gabby is surprised to discover that Travis is the son in this father-son venture. Seeing the spark between the two, Dr. Shep wonders if they are together, but the thought makes them both want to barf. Gabby accuses Travis of tricking her, but the man was only having fun. In an embarrassing turn of events, she also finds out that the woman she saw at Travis's place yesterday was not a flink, but his sister. He expects her to apologize, but when that does not happen, Travis is only amused by how difficult Gabby is. It does not deter him to ask her out for drinks, but Gabby rejects his offer. Travis is at the carnival with his friends and sister when Monica joins them too. They have been on and off since high school, but Travis isn't the type to commit. The rest of the night passes while the group of them play games and have fun. Travis is with Steph when she spots Gabby at the carnival. Steph gets excited to see her and lets Travis know her thoughts from that night in his kitchen. She thinks Gabby is the girl who will be Travis's wife. Gabby and Travis see each other and exchange hellos when Ryan shows up. Gabby introduces him as her boyfriend and Travis as her vet. Monica also shows up next to Travis, and a round of awkward introductions passes between the four. Gabby lets Ryan know that Travis is also her neighbor. The next morning, Gabby stands on her porch and watches Travis with a certain fascination as he fixes his boat. But when Monica shows up and kisses Travis, Gabby weirdly feels disappointed. 
Later, when Ryan shows up to meet Gabby, it is Travis who gives the couple some grumpy stares. Gabby meets with Ryan's parents and completely charms them with her epic golfing skills. Ryan is also leaving for a few weeks, but he promises to return soon. He even lets Gabby know that he's got marriage with her on his mind. His parents certainly approve of her. Travis is having lunch with his sister when she brings up the topic of Monica. Monica is back in town, and it seems she is here to stay, but Travis is not sure where Steph is going with this. And then his sister brings up Gabby. For some reason, Steph is sure that Gabby is Travis's opportunity to grab and he should not let her pass by even though the woman is a lot of work. But it is right up his alley. Late into the night, Gabby madly knocks on Travis's door. When he opens up, half-dressed and half-asleep, he finds Gabby freaking out about Molly. She is in labor. Travis quickly heads to Gabby's place and takes care of the situation. Once the pups are born, Travis lets Gabby meet Molly. Gabby is relieved to see that the dog and the puppies are okay. Travis warns her not to give them names, it'll be harder to put them up for adoption. He informs her that everything is fine, but he has to take the dogs to the clinic. But it is 3 o.m. Gabby does not understand. If the dogs are alright then why does Travis need to take them? It is precautionary, the man tells her. But Gabby argues that he said they were fine. Travis is amused by just how much Gabby bothers him, but in a way that he secretly likes it. Before he leaves, Gabby thanks Travis for all that he is doing. The next morning, Dr. Shep finds his son on the floor of the clinic, sleeping with the newborn puppies. Later that day, Gabby shows up at the clinic with a basket. Dr. Shep recommends building a pen for the puppies. He even gives Gabby the same advice about not naming the pups as Travis had given her the day before. It amuses Gabby how similar the two are in their ways. Dr. Shep replaces a 10-year-old girl's deceased pet lizard with a brand new one, wanting to avoid the pain of her having to deal with the topic of death so soon in life. Travis does not agree with his father's methods and wants to tell the girl the truth. But Dr. Shep makes him realize how the little girl is way too young to have to go through something like this so early in life. To teach his son a lesson, he tasks Travis with having to hand over the pet lizard to the little girl. Gabby is impressed by Dr. Shep's outlook. Travis follows his father's command and makes the little girl happy by claiming to have miraculously cured her pet. Travis and his gang are going out on a picnic. Travis loads up the boat with his friends and his sister, Steph. When Ben asks about Monica, Travis tells him that she is not invited. Instead, Gabby is joining them. While he is driving, Steph teases her big brother. Gabby's presence is making Travis nervous. Steph joins Gabby, who is enjoying the gorgeous views of the lake. She strikes up a conversation with her and soon, the other two women join in. They get Gabby to remove her sweatshirt since it is blazing hot under the sun. When she does remove it, Travis finds it hard to take his eyes off her. He is in real trouble. When they arrive at their destination, the group enjoys a nice time having a picnic and laughing together. Gabby and Steph get to talking when their conversation steers toward Travis. Gabby makes an accurate assumption about how the man is. He has always been the center of attention. Has the southern charm mastered down to the T, and is very popular with ladies, they would give anything to him and he only gives back just enough to have them keep coming back for more. And he has never been in love because he backs off when things get too hard. That explains the lonely chair he has in his yard. He likes being alone. Steph is impressed by how on point Gabby is at reading his brother, even though she has only known him a little while. Gabby heads over to Travis. He is in so much more trouble than she thought. Travis's eyes find Gabby, and he just can't look away. Gabby basks in the sun, enjoying the views when Travis takes a seat next to her. They joke around for a bit, but Travis can't stop admiring her. He thanks her for coming along with them, and Gabby admits that she feels happy to be there. She confesses how she has not felt this good in a while. It is really special. Back home again, Travis asks Gabby to grab a bite with him. Gabby wonders if anyone has ever said no to the man. He is not familiar with it. So, she supposes there is a first time for everything and bids him good night. But even then, as he watches her walk away after rejecting him, Travis is floored by her. That night, Gabby watches Travis sitting in his lonely chair, drinking his lonely beer. Minutes later, Moby comes up to Travis with a note on his collar. It is an invitation from Gabby for dinner. Travis reaches Gabby's doorstep, and she lets him in. He checks up on the dogs while Gabby prepares dinner. Seeing her cook an elaborate dinner, Travis jokingly proposes getting down on one knee. He finds a picture of Gabby from when she was young. Gabby tells him about her favorite memory at the property where she grew up. But then a hurricane washed away the property and all her favorite things away with it. She wonders if maybe that is why it is her favorite memory. You appreciate things more after you lose them. Travis seems to agree with her. After dinner, Gabby and Travis sit on the patio, drinking wine and admiring the beautiful view. But Travis can't seem to take his eyes off Gabby. A view so breathtaking makes Gabby wonder where it all comes from. But that is not the case for Travis. He is not the type to believe in God. Gabby has opposing opinions on that. 
Travis tells her what truly believes in his loyalty and love and friendship and family. It is all he believes you can count on in this world. Gabby, on the other hand, believes that she is a part of something bigger, something she can't even begin to understand, that she can't control, and that it is also beautiful. After that intense conversation, Gabby and Travis are relieved it did not go as badly as they had thought it might. Back inside the house, Travis puts a record on and goes through the pictures in Gabby's house. And soon he is convinced that there is nothing about her that can put him off. Gabby's in the kitchen, twirling to the music when Travis walks in and catches her. He teases her about it. Gabby needs to wash the dishes. He offers to help her, but she has got it covered. Travis asks her to dance with him out on the grass but Gabby says no, feeling a little amused. Travis wonders why she makes it so hard for him to flirt with her. It is because if she makes it easy, he would not flirt anymore. The second Gabby says that, she instantly regrets it. Travis watches her intently as he advances toward her with purpose. And then, he kisses her, knocking the words off her tongue. Gabby forgets all reason and lets it all go in the moment. When she wakes up the next morning, Gabby finds her bed empty. But then she sees the note stuck in Molly's collar. It is from Travis saying that he had to get to work and did not want to wake her up. Travis promises this is just starting to get good and that puts a goofy smile on her face. Just then, Gabby listens to a message from Ryan, just checking in with her, and it puts her smile away. Guilt starts to creep in. At the clinic, just after Dr. Shep sees off a patient, Travis gets on his case about how that woman is crushing on him, and that it is not one-sided. Dr. Shep denies all and any claims about that. But neither Travis nor the receptionist is believing any of that. She asks the doctor to just ask that woman out on a date and stop being in denial about it. Travis takes Gabby on a drive on the back of his motorcycle when the heavy rains force them to take a break. While waiting for it to pass, Gabby hears music. She follows the sound despite Travis's protests. The music is coming from the church but Travis is adamant about not going inside. He has a strong opinion about it too but Gabby does not listen to any reason and goes right in. The man has no choice but to follow her. Gabby vibes to the song the choir is singing. When it ends, Gabby is surprised to see Dr. Shep in the church. Travis is really uncomfortable when his father spots him in the church. But Dr. Shep is grateful for the birthday miracle that brought his son back inside a church. Later, he thanks Gabby for dragging Travis inside those doors, and the two of them bust Travis's chops. Travis has invited Gabby to the birthday dinner with his dad and sister. While he grills the steaks with Steph, Gabby is sitting with Dr. Shep. If she knew it was the old man's birthday, she would have brought a gift for him. But Dr. Shep tells her that it is not his birthday but his deceased wife's. She passed away from cancer when Travis was 14. That was when he found God, and Travis turned against him. Gabby feels for the guy and assures his father that Travis turned out just okay, despite it all. The birthday celebration is a hoot. Gabby enjoys being a part of the family's silly traditions and everyone ends the day on a happy note. While he is washing the dishes, Travis looks at Gabby just being herself and playing with Moby, and he falls in love with her a little bit. Later that night, Travis takes Gabby to show her something. Something he has not shown anyone. Something special. They get in the boat and Travis brings her to a secret beach that is just his. His grandfather used to bring him there, and Travis has never told anyone about it. But for some reason, he wanted Gabby to know about his island. They sit on the shore, and Gabby admires the beauty in front of her. And when Travis turns the lantern off, the moon shines brightly on them, leaving Gabby completely mesmerized. It is a gift from him, the stars, and the moon just for her. Gabby feels so overwhelmed with happiness that she just wants to stay there forever. The next day, that lady who is crushing on Dr. Shep returns to his clinic for the fourth time that week. Her name is Alice, and that day, the man seizes the opportunity and asks her out on a date. While Travis puts another chair in his yard just for Gabby, she gets a call from Ryan informing her of his return. He wants to meet her for dinner with his parents that night. Gabby is hesitant and does not know what else to do. That evening when Gabby arrives at the restaurant, Travis is already at the bar. When he sees her going ahead with Ryan, it hurts him deeply. While Gabby settles down at the table after greeting all, Travis walks over to introduce himself. While Ryan's dad introduces Travis to his wife, Gabby can't help but feel uncomfortable and guilty about the way that Travis is watching her. Ryan's father extends an invitation to Travis to join them, but Travis politely declines. He just stopped by to say hello. But as he is leaving, Gabby feels terrible. She excuses herself from the table and chases him. She tries to stop Travis but all he wants to know is if she is going to tell Ryan the truth. But Gabby does not know what she is going to do. Travis accuses her of using a country boy like him, and then as soon as summer camp's over, the rich girl's back to her rich boyfriend. Gabby takes offense at his accusation. How dare he assume he knows anything about her life. And Travis is no different. He goes after what he likes but not because he wants it only that he wants to win. Travis confesses that he wants her. It is all he wants. Her. She is confused and scared and it is not like they ever define this thing between them. She is not sure what to do. They just got caught up in the wave. Travis does not agree with that. He is in love with her. He tells her he loves her, he will say it a million times if he has to. 
But Gabby is torn. She can't just choose him and leave her life with Ryan. Travis wants her to stay with him forever. To come home with him. To bother him some more. Forever. As much as she might want to do it, Gabby can't seem to say yes to him. He offers to go with her and confess it all to Ryan, together. But Gabby can't. She can't seem to want that. And her refusal breaks Travis's heart. It is only as she watches him walk away, that Gabby realizes something. The next morning, she leaves a letter for Travis. It reads that she confessed everything to Ryan last night and he was as upset as one can be. Ryan stormed out that night but then returned the next morning and proposed to her. In her letter, she talks about the choices one makes and how it affects every single thing in their life that comes after. A few days pass, and Gabby and Travis drift completely apart. Travis grows lonelier. He even removes the chair he fixed for Gabby, and she notices it. As days go by, Monica finds her way back into Travis's life. When Gabby watches him in his yard with Monica one day, her heart just breaks. One night, while sitting on his swing with Travis, Monica realizes the obvious. He will never look at her the way he looks at Gabby. Monica cannot keep pretending that she could be the one when it is clear as day that there is not any other woman for him. She advises him, as a friend, to just swallow his pride. He should seize the opportunity and fight for Gabby right now, saving them both years of misery. That is the kind of guy any woman wants. The one who will fight for her and not give up so easy. The next morning, Travis goes to find Gabby at the hospital but she is not there. He searches for her like crazy only to get punched in the face by Ryan. Gabby broke up her engagement with Ryan and left town. Travis drives to Charleston and finds Gabby's house. He rushes in, looking for her and the butler leads him to the kitchen. The chef tells him that Gabby is returning from the stables. When Gabby sees Travis there, she is completely stunned. Travis goes ahead and introduces himself to the man and woman next to Gabby, thinking they are her parents. He confesses his love for Gabby and asks for their blessing in return only to find out that they are not Gabby's parents. Her parents are the ones who work on that property. Travis can't believe he made that mistake and apologizes for his blunder. He reintroduces himself to Gabby's parents. All the while Gabby just wants him to leave. She is so mad at him. But Travis is persistent and he wants to marry her. Gabby can't understand why he is there when she saw him with Monica that day. He moved on and picked up right where he left off. She does not want him there anymore and just won't listen to reason. She only wants him to leave. But Travis confesses his love to her again. But Gabby does not love him anymore. Even her parents do not believe Gabby's lie. Travis asks for their blessing and they give him the green signal. Her mother even gives him Gabby's grandmother's ring to propose to her. While Gabby is fuming, Travis gets down on one knee. And despite the many no's from her, he wants her to bother him for the rest of his life. Be his wife. And finally, Gabby says yes. Travis and Gabby get married in an intimate ceremony, and their happily ever after begins. The years pass by and their family grows. A baby girl comes first and then a boy. Through all the thick and thin, Gabby and Travis seem to have finally made it. And just like that, seven years go by. It is date night for Gabby and Travis. While Gabby is on her way, Travis is still stuck at work. He wants to make this date desperately because he could not make it the last time. But an emergency patient comes in, and Travis gets engaged with that. Meanwhile, getting tired of waiting for him, Gabby leaves the restaurant. It is pouring like cats and dogs as Gabby drives home, feeling upset and disappointed that Travis did not make it. He even leaves her a message, informing her that he is on his way but before Gabby can go through it, the worst happens. Gabby gets into a terrible car crash. Present day, Travis is visiting Gabby at the hospital with a heavy heart. He enters the hospital room where Gabby lies asleep. She has been in a coma for weeks now and can't breathe without the help of the machines. Travis talks to her and asks her to come back to him. That is all he wants. For her to open her eyes and come back to him. At night, when Travis gets home, his family is playing board games. Steph is also there. She is married now and has a baby on the way. Dr. Shep is now married to Alice. The kids are happy to see him, but everyone can see the sadness on his face. The days are a blur for Travis. Between work, being a father, and waiting for Gabby to wake up, he is just living each day in the hope that one day she will. Ryan tells Travis about the 90-day rule. After 90 days, the percentage of trauma patients who regain consciousness decreases to less than 1%. Neither Travis nor Dr. Shep is ready to believe that. Ryan shows them Gabby's do not resuscitate agreement. If they reach that mark, Travis needs to be prepared to carry out Gabby's choice. Travis does not think this is what Gabby would have wanted. A DNR is for when you are old and frail and have lived a full life. How could Ryan know for sure that Gabby will not wake up again? But it has been a long time since Gabby has breathed on her own. She is just tired now. Ryan asks Travis to make a choice and relieve Gabby from the pain. Travis does not know what to do. He sits next to Gabby, trying to decide for her life and he just can't do it. He wishes that he could breathe for her and take her pain away. It breaks Dr. Shep's heart to see his son this way. All Travis wants is for her to come back to him. He lays down next to Gabby and cries, calling her back home. Travis visits his mother's grave and talks to her about his loss. He is heartbroken and tired and confused. 
He remembers every memory he ever made with Gabby and just wishes, heartbrokenly, that he could tell her just how much he loved her every minute of every day. Steph comes to comfort him. Travis talks to her about the choice he has been asked to make for Gabby, but he just cannot do it. Not yet. He is not ready to let Gabby go just yet. Travis breaks down into tears and Steph holds him as he cries. A few more days pass by, and a hurricane strikes the town. Everyone evacuates and Travis sends the kids away while he stays back. He spends the night going through pictures of Gabby, missing her. In the morning, when his father visits, Travis is searching for something in the rubble left behind. Travis breaks down again, blaming himself for what happened to Gabby. If only he had reached the restaurant on time, Gabby would have been safe. His father provides him with some words of wisdom and asks him to not beat himself up. None of it was his fault. There is no shame in being a broken man. All he has to do is pick up the pieces and start rebuilding. One morning, Travis wakes up to Moby's barking. When he heads out, Moby points him to Gabby's wind chime. It was just the thing Travis needed. And then he starts building. When he is done, Travis sits under the gazebo that he built for Gabby, right in the middle of his secret island. He has even hanged her wind chime for her. Travis is lost in thought when, suddenly, the wind chime starts clinking, but there is no wind. Travis sees that the grass does not sway an inch, but Gabby's wind chime shakes like a leaf in the wind. Something strikes him as odd and Travis leaves for the hospital. He does not even check all the missed calls on his phone and just runs. Something pulls him toward the hospital. When he finally steps inside Gabby's room, Travis cannot believe his eyes. He is speechless when he sees Gabby just sitting there, waiting for him. He wraps her in his arms and the two lovers finally reunite. Days later, Gabby returns home. She meets her kids and Steph's newborn baby. And in that moment, everything feels alright again. The next evening, Travis plans a date with Gabby. He has so much to say to her but he is just so nervous. He can't get two words out, even though he's thought about this moment every single day since her accident. Gabby makes it easier for him by telling him that she heard him. She heard everything he said to her, every day. They are both in tears as they profess their feelings to each other. That night, Travis and Gabby bring their kids to the gazebo. The secret island is now named Gabby's Point. Travis turns the lantern off, and the family sits under the stars and basks, in the moonlit view of their second chance at happiness. 